me and a privilege to share my thoughts on national unity with all the intellectuals and the young thought leaders who are here on the Facebook page organized by Think India. First of all, I pay my homage and tributes to the great unifiers of the country, the great courageous brave hearts of Indian Armed Forces, Colonel Ashutosh Sharma, Major Anuj Sood, Lance Naik, Dinesh, and Sub-Inspector of Jammu Kashmir Police, Shakil Kazi, who were martyred in Handwara encounter. We salute them. They are our first gods. They, belonging to the Indian Armed Forces, they weave the fabric of national unity and national integration. They are the embodiments of Indian tricolor. They are there and they sacrifice their lives. Hence, we are safe in the country. Friends, when we are saluting the brave hearts and the soldiers of Indian Armed Forces, we must also look at the great icons and symbols of those who have kept India united culturally, spiritually, emotionally, and civilizationally. A country is not just a conglomeration of few buildings and mountains and rivers and stones and people. A country has a life and a soul. Unless you understand the soul and you identify that who you are, what defines you as an Indian, Neither you can understand your own personality, nor you can define your citizenship and your Indianness. We have been hearing a lot about Rani Lakshmi Bai, Tulsi, Kabir, Valmiki, Shivaji, and Rana Pratap. But friends, don't mind if I ask you, have you ever heard about Tiruvalluva, Velu Nachya? Andal, Avaya, Karnagi. You might have heard something about Subramanya Bharati. He was a revolutionary who lived in Banaras and he donned the North Indian attire. But how much do we know about it? In Tamil Nadu, if you go, you will find parents naming their daughter after Rani Lakshmi Bai. There are people, their names are Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. Chandra Shekhar Ajad, Jawaharlal Nehru, they are the names today of the Tamil young people. So much they love the national icons and the names that we are familiar with in the rest of the country. But do we know about the great philosopher, the devotee of Balaji, Vishnu? Andal was. Do we know that she was the embodiment of women empowerment? Because uh, women empowerment doesn't mean any kind of a patronage or guardianship or hand holding by the men. Women empowerment means having a right, having a power to take your own decisions. And Andal was a symbol of that. Avaya, Kannagi. Do we know that? The greatest influence on this planet by any poet philosopher. Who is that poet philosopher? The only name is Tiruvalluvar. Tiruvalluvar is a person who is globally adored, admired, respected, and he forms an essential part of every Tamil all over the world, wherever he is. But is it not irony that while we speak of national unity, national integration, national solidarity, cultural solidarity, very few people in the north and in other parts of the country would be knowing about the great contribution for Indian civilization, for the Hindu civilization by Thiruvalluvar, through his greatest epic classic, 
Tirukkura, the very first shloka, stanza of Tirukkura says, Agara mudala edu tela, Adi Bhagavan mudetra ulaga. A beautiful line. It says that all the alphabets in the world begin with the word A. It shows that the God has created all in the same equally. There is a unity between all the people and entire humanity. In my speech in the parliament, I had said that there can't be any national unity only if you say that we have Rana Pratap, Shivaji and Kabir and Meera and Tulsi and Valmiki unless we try to understand, appreciate, honor and admire Raja Raja, Chola, Chera, Pande, Krishnadevaraya, Kannagi, Andal, Avaya, Thiruvalluvar, Subramanya, Bharati and Velu Nachiya. A lot of girls in Tamil Nadu, they have the name Rani Lakshmi Bai. Even the princess today of uh, Thiru Anantapuram, a great scholar of uh, Shaiva Mata, and she speaks with such a great authority on Sri Padmanabh Swami and Adi Shankara. Her name is Rani Lakshmi Bai. Yeah, but friends, don't feel offended. How much of us know about the great queen of Tamil Nadu, Rani Velunachya? She was a great scholar of Tamil, French, little Urdu, and she was never defeated in her lifetime. Don't we feel that if you want that Rani Lakshmi Bai story should be taught in all the schools in the country all over from Nagaland and Arunachal to Gujarat and Tamil Nadu to Kashmir. Why not Velu Nachiar's story should also be formed a part of national curriculum. Thiruvalla should also be part of national curriculum. Raja Raja Chola and his son Rajendra Chola they created the World Heritage Site World Heritage in Tanjavur Temple, the Vradishwar Temple complex is a world heritage declared by UNESCO. The greatest architectural marvels, unbelievable, amazing Hindu architecture, Shiva temples in Tanjavur, in Kumbakonam, Vradishwar Temple and Vradishwar Temple. People from all over the world come and see those temples, thousand years old. But not a single textbook in the rest of the country gives the life story of Raja Raja Chola and Rajendra Chola who ruled over the waves. The entire East Asia was conquered by them. Even today, if you go, the Shaimat, the Hindu Dharma, was spread during their time and from Laos to Java, Bali, Sumatra, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, all these countries, they remember Raja Raja Chola and Rajendra Chola perhaps more than we do. They are the stories that I started narrating on All India Radio in the program Dakshina Setu. And the people were surprised when they heard these names. And many of them heard these names for the very first time. We have such stories in all the states. We know the great story of Sri Narayan Guru in Kerala. He fought for social equality and he united the society. He fought against a caste-based discrimination. But many of us may not be knowing about the great contribution of one of his contemporary, Mahatma Ayankali. Those were the times when the scheduled castes were not allowed to walk on the main road. They were not allowed to have the same kind of clothes and attire that the so-called high caste were wearing. They were not allowed to even 
have a bullock cart or ride on the horse. Those were the times when Mahatma Ayankali stood like a rock. He defied the atrocious and horrendous restrictions by the so-called high caste people, took the bullock cart, walked on the high roads, and inspired the scheduled caste people to go to the schools, learn higher education, and fight out the caste-based discrimination with courage. I am a Hindu and I will remain a Hindu and I will die as a Hindu, but I will not tolerate any kind of a discrimination against my people just because they remain a Hindu. The discriminations against them can be imposed only till they are Hindu. That was the clarion call of Mahatma Ayankali. And he remains as a great inspiration for the social equality. Even today, as the RSS Sarsanga Chalaji, Rampuja Mohanji Bhagavad has said that all Hindus must strive to ensure that the temples, the cremation ground, and the water and the tea must be available to every Hindu equally, everyone, no discrimination. Why he had to say? Because still we find this kind of a discrimination prevalent in many societies in South, in North. Mahatma Ayankali, like Sahuji Maharaj, was a great social reformer, a Hindu spiritual leader who stood firm to demolish this kind of a discrimination with courage. Should we not know about him? Should we not celebrate his memory? Should we not ensure that his story, the saga of his struggle, is taught in the textbooks, the rest of the country, the school curriculum? That is what we should do if we have to have a united India. You cannot say that because we form a majority here in the northern side, so Tamil Nadu will learn Hindi. But we will not learn Tamil. This is not good. And we know I come from North India. I have said these words in the Parliament House in Rajya Sabha. Here is a condition when the North Indian people are leaving Hindi. Even the best of the correspondents who are working in the Hindi newspapers, Hindi media, Hindi magazines, if you see their visiting cards, their visiting cards would be printed in English. How many of the people in North India, they send their children to Hindi medium schools? How many of them buy really the Hindi books and keep the Hindi books in their room or in the airplanes? Essentially, I have seen that most of them read only English books. I always carry with me a Hindi book. When there have been instances that when they saw some of the Four passengers, they saw me reading a Hindi book, they were surprised and said so. But we want Tamil Nadu to read Hindi. Should we not begin that we will start appreciating Tamil language ourselves? We will start learning Tamil, Telugu, Kannada and Malayalam ourselves. We will not ask that you have to do this or do that. We respect you, we honor you. And without Understanding Tamil culture, language, heritage, history. We can't understand India. We just can't understand India. How many of us even heard the name of Shilapati Karam, Mani Mekhali, or the Kamban Ramayanam? Do we know to which area Kamban belongs to in Tamil Nadu? And what miracle the Kamban Ramayanam did on the minds of the Tamil people? Do we know that the first president of Tamil Sangam, universally accepted and respected, is Lord Shiva? Shiva Shankar is the first president and the chairman of Tamil Sangam. And Tirukural was presented in the Tamil Sangam in Minakshi Temple by Tiruvalluva. There is a great connect between our civilization, our culture, 
and the great servants and the social spiritual leaders of south without that we just can't even worship bharat mata the one person who came from kalari kerala adi shankara the young brahmachari a great scholar in shaiva math he united the country like no one else has done he is the real creator of bharat rashtra adi shankar he established four mathas badri kedar shangeri and dwarka and kamak sorry badri puri shangeri and dwarka without the four pilgrim centers a hindu's spiritual life remains incomplete he started offering the coconuts at badrinath and gangajal at rameshwaram what a great idea of national unity he created a new advaita vedanta for the hindu dharma he fought against the discriminations on the basis of caste he tells the feet of chandala in kashi and so shiva shankar in the body of chandala and ask for gyana from him this is the ideal before us the great rani chenamma the great story of krishna devaraya hampi who established the vinagar empire hari har bukka and they took blessings from uh, the shankaracharya and they kept the muslim invaders away from entering south for centuries the krishna raya like raja raja chola cher and pandya is one of the greatest emperors of india greatest emperors of india and we must know and understand how hampi was built into the most beautiful into a architectural wonder of the world and who demolished it i read a essay by nobel laureate sir vidya sagar naipal he had written in new york times sunday review i interviewed him also for panchjanya and he had participated in one of the programs of panchjanya swarna jayanti he said that tarun hindus are suffering from memory loss the biggest curse on the hindu society is not that the foreign invasions took place and they demolished best of our cities and temples and loot the biggest curse is that we are suffering from memory loss one of the very famous english writers arke narayan he wrote malgudi days and there was a tv serial on that uh, uh, literary uh, work naipal said that look arke narayan establishes that the boy the hero of the malgudi days his village malgudi is 50 km from hampi he knows hampi he mentions hampi but he would not find it appropriate logical to add and to mention who demolished and destroyed hampi and why because that was a secular thing hindus must not narrate the story of their agony the story of their pain the story of their destruction by the foreign invaders because the the sham secularism prohibits that and this is the curse of secularism that we don't feel inclined 
to understand, appreciate, and study those threats, which are the basic elements, basic factors uniting the country. So, Harihar Bukka is not taught, Rani Chennama is not taught, Kaketiye Empire is not taught, the great Adi Shankara, Sri Narayan Guru, Mahatma Ayankali, Andal Avayar, Kandagi, they are not taught. But we have all the stories on who are the son, son in law, daughter, daughter in law, how many wives the Mughal kings had, Babar, Shah Jahan, Jahangir, Taj Mahal, Noor Jahan, all these things, chapter after chapter, we have in our history books. This is the time to relook and add the real civilizational great men and women in our lessons, in our school curriculums. Similarly, how much do we know about the great Guy Dinliu, a young girl of 14? She joined the guerrilla army of her brother Jadonang in Nagaland, fought against the British, collected a huge army of young girls and boys in Nagaland in Jeliangrong area, from Kohima to Dimapur, to Manipur regions. They fought against the British. At 16, she was caught by deceit as was the nature of the British. And in a Kangaroo British court, she was sentenced life imprisonment. Nobody would have heard about it. At the age of 16, a British court sentencing a young fighter, guerrilla warrior, Gaidin Liu, life imprisonment. Her case was taken up by Pandit Nehru. He visited Gaidin Liu in Kohima jail. And he has written in his biography that when he saw that young lady in the jail, he was struck by her beauty, the grace, the aura on her face was so great that Pandit Nehru wrote that she was a Rani. She looked like a Rani, a queen. From then on, everyone started calling Gai Dinliu as Rani Gai Dinliu. She was a peasant girl, a village girl, a great patriotic person, had faith in Hindu dharma. She was a worshipper of Kali Mata and would go in the caves in Nagaland and worship Ma Durga and Ma Kali. That's the reason that she was almost exiled after that from Nagaland. And you know the reason the proselytizers never liked her. She could come out of the jail only after independence. She was felicitated and honored with Tamra Patra and Padma Bhushan by Srimati Indira Gandhi. She joined Vanvasi Kalyan Ashram and became president of Vishwa Hindu Parishad in Nagaland. The greatest story of Rani Gaidil hardly we come across people who would even pronounce her name correctly. We know about Dimapur. But you know the story of Dimapur? Dimapur is named after Hidimba. The Hidimba, you know, a great story of Indian spiritual legacy. And you can know about her more. But Dimapur in Nagaland is named after Hidimba. Similarly, the Arunachal tribe, Idu Mishimi, they say that they are the Yadavas. Rukmani belonged to them. Krishna came from Dwarka to Bhishmaknagar to marry Rukmani. And Rukmani is from Arunachal. Married to Krishna, went to Dwarka. 
perhaps some of you would remember that the credit goes to our dynamic and very very spiritual and culturally rich prime minister narendra modi ji who organized a yatra from bishwaknagar arunachal to dwarka in memory of krishna and rukmini our friend and minister kiran rijuju participated in that similarly parashuram kund in arunachal pradesh it is in the memory of lord parashuram after brahma hatya sin he dip his uh, paras parasu in uh, lohit river beyond uh, dibrugarh in achal pradesh and you will see that entire hill inside lohit river is exactly of a dhanush a parashu parashu aakar parashu a shape thousands and thousands of arunachal tribals come there every year on makar sankranti day we should try to go there next makar sankranti and find a new india find the great spiritual heritage of the country so much live in our northern most parts similarly in jiro i have seen a swayambhu shivalinga like amarnath about uh, an hour and a half from itanagar the capital city of arunachal pradesh 18 feet high shivalingam people worship there it's a big uh, uh, spiritual uh, pilgrim center there are hundreds of such stories spread in assam manipur meghalaya in tripura temples and heritage sites of great ancient importance friends when we speak of assam we cannot resist mentioning the great vir and courage of the ahom kings you know the ahom kings were the only kings who stopped the expansion of mughals into northeast and one of the most popular figure of the warriors of ahoms is lachit barfukan the ahoms ruled assam and northeast continuously for 600 years 600 years a hindu empire was ruling a vast area of northeast the kamakya kshetra up to arunachal continuous 600 years we speak in our textbooks about aurangzeb about tipu sultan about babar show me the essential readings in rest of the country in history in social studies we tell us about the ahom kings we should be very very proud of it he was a indian empire indian emperor lachit barfukan and the great kings we should know more about it and similarly in tripura meghalaya manipur we find hundreds of such stories is spread in every part of the region they make india complete they create a united india they create the vibhav of india cultural and societal solidarity similarly in a many parts of the country we have seen that how people have sacrificed their lives to keep the flag of india the keep the flag of hindu dharma the keep the flag of india's civilization and unity high one of them as one of the participants has also uh, mentioned there is one mahapurush in bharat only one mahapurush 
who is known as Hind ki chadar. He is not known as Punjab ki chadar. He is not known as Sikho ki chadar. He is known as Hind ki chadar. Who is that? Yes. He is such a Pasha, Guru Nanak Bahadur Sahib. We are passing through a war-like situation. One war is on the medical front, Corona. The other war is terrorism. And that there are two kinds of terrorism. One with the AK-47 and hand grenade by the cowards and thugs of Islamic jihadism in Kashmir. And the other terrorism is the media terrorism spreading venom and poison against their own country, against India, against the Hindus, against the Indian people in foreign newspapers and columns. They are authoring such atrocious columns in Gulf News, in Washington Post, in New York Times. And today we have seen the Reuters India report on the elimination of the terrorist. I don't want to name him. These thugs don't deserve even to get their names mentioned. They are the thugs and terrorists only. The writer says that the Indian troops kill a maths teacher turned rebel. And the writers has filed a report from India. These are our media terrorists. The jihadi left terrorists who create a negative atmosphere, who put out venom against their own country. If the guns of terrorists do physical harm, the pens and computers of these media terrorists impact the same kind of a loss and hurt on the Indian psyche. In Hindi, we call it the Hinsa. If AK-47 is a Barudi Hinsa, the poisonous reporting of the secular journalists in the foreign newspapers, in Indian newspapers, against India, against the patriotic people, against uh, the nationalists and civilizational people is Shabda Hinsa, which is as hurtful as the bullets of AK-47. In this atmosphere, we have to remember those threats and factors who keep us united. Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib helped Kashmir Indians and saved them. The 11 Kashmiris led by Pandit Kirbaram, they had gone to Sajj Pasha Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib because then again also the Muslim jihadis they were killing attacking him they wanted to make the entire Kashmir Islamic where no Hindu is there as barbaric and as savage as only most can be they were killing young children they were molesting the Hindu women, demolishing the Hindu temples. At the time, Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib accepted their plea. And as he goes, he said that to save you, a great person will have to sacrifice his life. They said that his young son, Govind Rai, later became Guru Govind Singh Ji, the creator of great Khalsapan, with folded hands, he told his father, Hey Sache Pasha, who can be greater person, greater leader than you? And we know that the orange, the cruel orange, how torturously he killed Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib, Bhai Sati Das, and Bhai Mati Das. Those sacrifices have left India united. And there's a reason. Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib is known as Hind Ki Chadar. Hence, it is a duty, it's the duty of the intellectual warriors of the country, 
of the Baudhik Yodhas of the king, of the thought leaders like you to keep these threats alive and defeat the forces who are dividing the country for demanding for the Tukre Tukre gang or the Ajati gang. They should be freed from all this malice. And it is a time when as a patriotic citizen, we keep the unity of India intact, strengthen the solidarity. We all, whatever religion, whatever faith we belong to, we may be Hindus, Christians, Muslims or Sikhs, but for India, we are one tricolored Indians. For us, the tricolor is the greatest God. For us, the constitution is the biggest dharma. And this is a time when with this unity and solidarity, we must lead India to a greater victory, not only on the cowardly terrorists in Kashmir, but on Corona and on the fissiparous tendencies led by the leftist shamanists and those who live here but divide the society and pour venom against their own people. This is a Vande Mataram time. This is a time when the spirit of Somnath, when the spirit of Anandamat must be revived. I hope that most of you must have read and must read the two books I recommend, Jai Somnath, Kanaya Lal, Manik Lal, Munshi, the resurrection of the Somnath. We must also know that how Somnath was demolished by Ghazni, how a small mafia, some few horsemen came from Ghazni in Afghanistan, a small town, past all the reasons from Sindh and Punjab and Gujarat and Rajasthan, reach Gujarat. In Prabhas Patan, they not only demolished Somnath but took away with them the booty, the pearls and diamonds of Somnath temple, and with them the thousands of Hindu men, women, and children as slaves. And they passed all that area from Prabhas Patan to Ghazni in Afghanistan. The passes givers were the same kind of a people who are today writing against India, these secular leftist journalists. They are the same kind of a people who give passes, who invite Ghaznis, who give passes to the invaders, right to the Arabs, come and loot India. They have to be defeated finally for the last time. This is a battle for the soul of India. This is a battle for the core values of India. If India survives, we all survive. If India is victorious, we all are victorious. Defeat those forces who are conspiring to defeat India, defeat the nationalist forces, defeat the sufferance of the country. This is our bounded duty in dharma. With the words, I express my gratitude and thanks to India. For giving me this opportunity. If you have questions, I would like to answer them with all my ability. Thank you so much. Jai Hind and Vande Mataram. There are many uh, suggestions, and uh, uh, Joy Aditya Fukan has also said in Tejpur, Assam, you can still see the place where the battle of happened Vishnu and Shiva when uh, Krishna's grandson Aniruddha married Usha, daughter of. Yes, these are the stories that we are narrating to people, to our generation, to children, and write about it in the newspapers. This is a time that. The saffron community that represents 
the Indian core value of civilization and cultural continuity must come to the fore and defeat the darkness. The evil empire is on the brink of destruction. Let us kick it out finally and send it in the depths of Arabian Sea. This is the message today. India has to be victorious. Antim will hamari hogi. Or yeah, Vijay, Hamare Apne Kesariya Dhurs, or Hamare Ki Bhavna Se, or Samas Rashtake Samas Koko, Ek Sat Lekar, Kamil Hai, Telugu Hai, Alam Hai, Guti Hai, Uriya Hai, Asam Hai, In Sab Me, Ek Bharat Ka Rang, Rang, Tira Rang, Vahi Sab Ko Ek Karega, Or Yeh Samay Hai, Ki Jab, Jum, Mughlo Kankar, Mughlo Khan Samay Kehate Hai, उनको बता देना होगा मुगल भी धूल और मिट्टी में मिल गए हम शिवाजी राणा प्रताप राज राज चोल चेर पांडे कृष्णदेव राय और अहोम राजाओं के वंशज हैं यहां पर किसी भी विदेशी धन देशी मन का एक भी हम रहने नहीं देंगे उसका सर्वनाश करेंगे भारत और भारतीयता की ही विजय होगी सर प्लीज सजेस्ट द मेजर टू पुट अ रिस्ट्रिक्शन over the Western left media. Democracy and pluralism is in, alive in India only because India is a Hindu majority. Country. The left and the Western media is spreading venom and all the falsification against Indias and Hindus. We must write against them. We must cut them. And through democratic means, we must see that the truth prevails. We are the followers of Satya Mev Jayate. It will be a bit difficult, but the path of truth is always difficult. We have to be defeated. And the more we are emerging victorious, the more we are baffled and they are writing all sort of uh, malicious and false reports. I am sure that the truth written by you, by you will be accepted by the world community don't stop writing against them what is your message for the students of iits and nits the present way fatigue due to corona crisis yeah i think that the iits and niitians can play a role they can innovate in many ways so that the fight against corona is held first the corona warriors must be respected. There has to be an ecosystem built where the corona warriors get all the respect and honor they deserve. And uh, those who are falsifying the situation, trying to let down India, they must be countered through social media, through good news by IITians and NIITians. Let the technology lead our war on falsification, the war of truth must be led by the tax savvy IATians and IATians. So should we counter the Dravidian sectarian forces at, at uh, Kansas? They are on the defeat, but we must keep on voicing our Narrative. Velunachiar, Subramanya Bharat are the greatest symbols of Indian nationalism. Take the refuse in Subramanya Bharati's writings and all these best tendencies, the Dravidians and the left jihadi elements. It's a Deadly combination, they divide society, they create uh, wedges between one section and the other section, and they are pure poison, like Shiva, who gulped the halahal and kept it in the throat and gave the nectar, Amrita. We must fight out this poison, this venom of. Uh, Fisiparous tendencies. Dravidians, 
they don't have any logic or any truth with them. We have with us Krishna. We have with us Tiruvalluva. We have with us Raja Raja Chola Chere Pandey and Krishna Dev Raya. We have with us Subramanya Bharati. Jai Jai Bharata Desham Jai Jai. Jai Jai Bharata. He created the great national songs for the country. Let Subramanya Bharati lead our fight against the social society dividers. What, when can we include Sharda civilization and uh, Sharda Lippi back again in history book? Uh, Ravindraji Namaskar. You know that uh, we have uh, included the Sharda Peet monument in our exhibition on the birthday of Sri Narendra Modi ji, which was inaugurated by Prahlad Patel ji and Dr. Tendra Singh ji. First time we celebrated Sharda Peet in the Ministry of Culture and on our cal calendar also, the Sharda Peet is But I am fully agreeing with you that the story of Sharda, Sharda Peet and the story of Sri Vidya must be included as an essential reading in our textbooks. And I will appeal to our Honorable HRD Minister also to have the lesson on Sharda Peet included in the NCERT textbooks. Thank you. Thank you so much. See you again. Wishing you all the best in Corona times. Jai Hind and Vande Mataram.